All right, it's been a long time coming chatting with Jazz, my girl. We uh, we wanted to chat last year and uh, it, we just kind of didn't get around to it. Um, this year, 2022, it's a uh, jazz season, as you say. How, how have you been? I've been great, man. It's a great start to the year. You know, we're coming out of lockdown finally after a hard couple of years, I must say, but um, it's definitely great to, you know, get into the year with a fresh start and a fresh, fresh song. So I'm very excited. How was lockdown for you and the last, I guess, kind of year, year and a half? Um, I know you're really tight with your team, um, George and yeah. Yak over at Hilo Creative. Were you in the studio? Were you writing all the time? Um, or did it kind of put a little bit of a, I guess, roadblock in what you were trying to do? Uh, it was definitely a difficult couple of years um, in terms of, I guess, the creative side of things. We definitely tried to make do using, you know, different platforms like Discord and Zoom and stuff to try to create the sound. But it's definitely not the same as like working in person face to face. So yeah, it was definitely a difficult couple of years. We took, you know, any opportunity we had between lockdowns to to create and just, you know, tee up and get things moving. But we definitely had our setbacks over the yeah, over the time. And it's just good to finally be leaning out of that and getting the opportunity to get back in the studio and like work on things full time. But yeah, definitely had our setbacks. I want to say it was back in 2019 when Yak and George came out to Perth and I met with them and they said, you know, we have this project that we're working on this female artist. Her name is jazz. They played me a, a couple of little pieces off of, off of some unfinished work back then. And I was, you know, I was like, wow, like, all right, I'm excited to see what, what comes from this. And I don't know if George has told you the story, but he had sent me your track, wish you well, which we're going to get into and have a bit of a chat about. Um, and I had played it and then I had forgotten about it. And then I'm driving down the road to go to work and I'm, I'm on new music Friday and this song pops up and I'm just like, wow, this song is amazing. And I looked at it and I saw, oh, this is jazz. And I was like, is that the girl that George had sent me a track about? And I look in the credits and right there I see Yak and I'm like, this is her. So I fell in love with the song without even knowing that, you know, you were in connection with the boys at Hilo Creative. Oh, my God, I'm so humbled to hear that. It's honestly just I can't even put to words. Um First of all, I'm so glad that you like the song without even knowing there was that tie behind it. But um, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely great to hear that you know it's it's out there and it's on these platforms that people can hear and you know you like like yourself, you put a, a face to it by going into the credits and like seeing who it was. But I'm glad to know that it's not just you know me as a person that people are drawn to the song with. It's kind of just like the song itself and standalone, like it does its own thing. So it's yeah, it's I'm very humble. Thank you. How long was the process, you know, getting to that debut single of yours? How, how long had you been working on that? Gosh, I can't even, honestly, I can't even remember how long it took. I think it was over about a year and a half in the works or about a year in the works and purely just based on the fact that we were going in and out of lockdowns and stuff. Um, the process itself wasn't that long. Um, it came together really, really quickly. Um, the songwriting process, the production, it just, you know, I was working with Yark at the time and obviously it was just such a seamless process getting from start to finish. And yeah, it, it came together quite quickly, but at the same time, to the same token, all those setbacks didn't, didn't really help getting it out. But, um, you know, we, as I said before, we took the opportunities when we could to get, you know, things together. Um, it definitely went from the process of, you know, producing and, you know, writing the song at the same time. So then going on to having the opportunity to get in the studio together and like record the song to the best of its quality and then getting into all, you know, the marketing side of things and stuff that all came later, but definitely in between there was, um, there was months where we'd go without actually like working on it properly. So definitely, definitely a long process. Were you surprised by the reception you got for your, your, your debut single? Is that what you expected in your mind? I did not expect to see receive such an incredible response from so many people. I was shocked from the get-go, like within the first few days. Um, it was making numbers. I had people messaging me, uh, you know, asking things like, 
what are the lyrics to the song? Like, can I have the lyrics to the song? And that, that more than anything humbles me the most because it's just like people were resonating with it from, you know, the production to the lyrics to the whole package itself to a point where it was just, yeah, very overwhelming, very quick, like thrown in the deep end, um, responding to all these people that just, you know, really love the track. And um, it's so good to see till now that it's obviously still playing it's still making it's still making numbers which is yeah I'm, I'm very overwhelmed by it I, I didn't expect that it would even take the the road it did but it has and I just want to keep on you know making music and getting stuff out there because you know it means the world to me to be able to share this side of me with everyone else so yeah I want to talk to you about working with Yark because I worked with him back in, I think, 2019, 2020 on a track called I'm Back with one of the artists that I work on. It's so hip hop heavy. Then I've heard his dance music that he comes out with. And then all of a sudden I get sent this track with this jazz girl and it's this soul, R&B, just this soothingness. I've told him when I talk to him that he's one of the most versatile producers that I've you know, met and know and is putting out music in Australia and, and the world right now. What is it like, you know, working with him as a creative? Well, I met Jacob back in like 20, 2018. And I've got to say like over time, we've definitely built one of the strongest connections I've ever had with any other human being. Um, he's incredible, like from, from the like a friendship side of things as well as the production, production side of things. He's just very, very, as you said, very versatile. We've created, you know, tracks like Mind, um, which came out in 2018, um, which was, you know, electronic pop and heavy on that side of thing. And then we went to like Technicolor, which was real vibrant and still on like, you know, still on the electronic side of, of music, but um, definitely changed up heaps when it came to Wish You Well. And I was so incredibly surprised that he was able to, you know, change his production and his style to cater to me as an artist and he's done that from from day one I don't know I can't say I'm actually really that surprised because he's just as you said so versatile um and he really can connect with just about anyone and like all of the tracks that I've seen all of the people that he's worked with he he really puts the artist first and, and really knows how to you know show, like produce that vision that they're looking for so you, you released this track last year in 2021 and you, 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 you receive, you know, some amazing res, uh, reception and feedback and, and placements for it. Does that put more pressure on you after that? Or does it kind of relieve some of the pressure for you? Definitely, definitely a lot more pressure um, in the sense that obviously I've gone from something with um, a success that I didn't think it would have. Um, it was a ballad. That we, that we wrote, that we put together. And we're moving along now to a, a pop track, you know, so completely different um, in terms of sound. But I'm hoping that, you know, people still like it. So people still, you know, want to go and listen and still jam to it the way that they have with Wish You Well. So there is definitely a lot of pressure to, you know, weigh up to that standard at the end of the day. But, yeah, I'm just, just fingers crossed that people really like it so far. From who I've shown, um, I've had great reception. So, yeah, I'm just hoping that everyone else kind of kind of likes it just as much as they like Wish You Well. When you're talking with your team, and I and I, t- I talk to your team quite a bit just about music and what's going on in the scene and, and, and what, the, what you guys are all up to, is that conversation an easy one to go, you know what, we were so successful in this space our second track, our sophomore track, we're going to kind of go a different, a different angle. You know, there's even like a little bit of a drop in there, which, you know, reminds me of Yark straight away. I go, all right, yeah, there's that production I see coming in. Is that a scary thing for you or is it, you know what, like this is what I, this is my story and this is who I want to be. It's, it's both scary and to the same token, exactly where I want to be right now with my sound. So I think though sonically it's not you know of the same genre or anything like that they both they both weave into each other um and I feel like I've I've kind of um I guess found my own own sound by working through these tracks um and it's just something that I want to keep working on and keep developing at the end of the day and um just making it you know my own it's it's definitely different but definitely somewhere something that I want to be sonically right now um with my sound so I think that they um they go hand in hand though they're so different um, between the tracks, but yeah. 
Let's talk about this new single that's just come out on Friday last week, Care Too Much. Um, give me a little bit of a, a look into what this song, I guess, means to you because I guess to me it, it, it kind of says – we all, I guess, really um, sometimes tend to care too much about what other people think or what they think of us and judgments and stuff like that. Is that what you're getting at in here? Definitely. You hit the nail on the head with that. Um, I wrote this song back in April of 2021 and we were going through a lockdown at the time and I was kind of in my room, like in my feels, sort of just chilling, talking to the girls in a group chat and I started off with this melody and the first words that came out were you can call me uptight and I'll say you're wrong. And my first thought after that was to message the girls and just be like, what do you guys think I'm bad at? I guess, as I simply put, um, what do you think I'm bad at? What do you think holds me back from being the best version of myself? And they started to list all of these things, like the fact that I'm, you know, uptight or that I, care too much about what people think and that I love the people I love so much that I hold myself back. And I guess it just came together that the story would be that I just overall care too much and that it definitely doesn't do me justice all the time. I don't think it's wrong to care in general, but there's definitely over caring to the point where it does, you know, hold you back from where you want to be as a person. Um, and that's what the story is about. It's about, you know, reminding yourself that though you can care, like caring to a point that it's setting you back, it's just like simply not the way to go about your life. Sometimes you need to put yourself first and remind yourself that it's okay to just like, let go, as the lyrics would say. So, yeah. Where are you, I guess, now then? Because you've thrown yourself feet first into a profession, into a career where it, it, you place yourself in, a, in a, an environment where everyone does get to have an opinion, whether it's on blogs, whether it's in the comments on your social media, when you release music, are you still in a place where you do care what other people are writing and how they perceive who you are? Or are you getting better at, I guess, muting those things? I think this song's definitely helped. I'm not going to say that I've stopped caring too much because there's definitely a lot of things in life that I do care too much about. And obviously music is one of those things for me um, since it's such a big part of my life. But I guess I've learned to take the good with the bad. Like there might be people out there that m might not like the sound or the songs or I guess my image as an artist, but there are so many out there that I've seen that, you know, do like what I'm putting out there. And I guess i got to, you know, take that good and make that, you know, front of mind all the time just to, I guess, as you said, not, not care too much about what everyone else thinks. I'm, I'm learning definitely, but um, it's definitely that still there. We're all, we're all still learning. And, and yeah, it, it, it's, e it's easy to say that you, you know, you don't care or that it, what pe words and, and comments and stuff, you know, don't get too deep, but yeah, it, it takes a, a special person to be able to not be influenced or or stressed by them. Um, I guess for you, you know, you're you've started off the year with with this track, and and you've come off the success of last year. Where's your mind at right now for 2020? You know, we are able to start to perform a little bit more and and get out and about. What's the trajectory of jazz for you know this year? So obviously we had Wish You Well at the end of the year. We have Care Too Much to start this year off. We have one more single in the works, um, I guess, to tie off a little bit of a narrative on perseverance. Um, and then following on from that, I kind of just want to get into the studio with other creatives and make music. I've been making with music with Yark for so long um, and it's been obviously the best time ever um that I've had creating music but I know that in order to be the best artist I can be I need to broaden my horizons as I would say um get into get into rooms with other people other songwriters and singers and producers just any creative that is willing to you know give their time to me um to help me you know find my place in the music industry um who, who are some so, yeah. of those people in your mind, you know, that you're looking out into the Australian music scene right now and, and artists or producers that you would love to lock in within a studio and, and work with? I have 
had a few people reach out um, and we'll be working with a producer by the name of Alephirios um, towards, you know, the, the first half of this year. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, Jacob Yark has worked with um, a girl from On3 um, mm-hmm. named Zuki and she is an incredible singer-songwriter, um, incredible vocalist. Um, and we get on really well, so I'm keen to get into a studio with her. And I guess at the moment it's just about getting these three singles, you know, off to the side, out there before I can start doing that. But I'm definitely keen to get into to rooms with other people. If I had a studio booked and I could, you know, bring any artist for you to work with from anywhere in the world, you know, right now, <laughs> is there one that you would just go, that's my, you know, dream collab. That's who I want to be in with um, on a song. It's, it's, it's far-fetched, but um, I've always loved Billy. And I'm hoping that one day I might get that opportunity. I think she's just such an incredible artist um, from her songwriting to the way she's just progressed over the years and, you know, changed so much, but still kept that same audience. Like it's that I definitely aspire to, to be able to be like in the future. So yeah, definitely a dream for that to work with Billie Eilish. I just watched, um, well, I haven't finished it yet, but the Billie Eilish documentary on Netflix and yeah. yeah, like, it's so interesting to see how she hates writing, but you know, she works with her brother who is an absolutely yeah. amazing songwriter in his own right as well. Um, yeah. but yeah, she is, like you said, I think so true to her image and, and what she stands for and her sound and, and, you know, to have someone like that as the direction of where you want to go. I, I feel like you've done so much in a short period of time. I'm really, you know, excited to see what you do do this year with um, the team that you have around you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your support and for your time. Um, I really appreciate it. And I'm keen to put things out and hear what you have to say. I really, like, yeah, I do appreciate it.